Chapter 3 Nelly was determined to write the greatest story ever about little bitty unimportant villain. She sharpened her pencil, opened a new notebook, and polished her typewriter. You folks do know about typewriters and ribbons, right? Just image a computer that doesn't compute and waits as much as a large, a large gold. And instead of a screen, it has a piece of paper when you press a key, a metal bar wrapped wax into an inky ribbon that leaves a mark on the paper. Hopefully, the marks look like the letter you wanted to type. If not, rip out the paper and start all over again. Nelly put a fresh ribbon in her typewriter and used the old one to tie up her hair. Then she put on her best pair of blue jeans and her fancy flannel shirt. She even cleaned the grime of her glasses, which she usually forget, forgot to do. Then she called a taxi and rode out the little ditty uninterrupted villa out the lit <laughs> it was all the way on top of Mount Magmatch and the horse pulling the taxi got tired so the horse got in and Nelly got out and pulled it the rest of the way up there the mountain. That's how badly she wanted to get the story because she was so much faster than the horse. She got there early, she went into the town hall, which was also the high school gym. She sat in the front row and got ready to write down all the action. For the first hour, nothing happened other than the gym teacher punching up basketball. Finally, the town council members came in and set up a folding table under one of the basketball hoops. And the meeting got started. We are called this meeting to discuss our plans to discuss holding a meeting for planning a discussion about meeting to make, plan, make plans, said the gym teacher, who was also the mayor. Please Limit your comments to half an hour each. Then everyone took turns a talking and a yammering and a blattering and a wheezing and a winning and a complaining and a boasting. Then Nelly fell asleep. She woke up when the Mayo banged a gable and say meeting adjourned. Aaron D left, Nellie looked down at her notebook. It was completely blank. The taxi had already left because the horse had a hot date back in the city. So Nellie had to walk all the way back to the office where she walked. She thought about how badly she had blown it. It was morning by the time she got back to the office. In fact, now she was late for work on top of everything else. She opened the door and went in. Brian, the editor, was already there. She wondered what she uh, what should apologize for the first. Either way, she knew that Brian, the editor, would fire her. She would never become the double best reporter in history, unless she thought hopefully something else happened that's so big that they'd forget on all about my story. Like maybe a volcano is about to explode. I can't talk now, Nelly," said Brian, the editor. "I'm on the phone with President." Hugo, she, he says, there's a volcano about to explode. Where is the volcano, sir? Brian, the editor, asked President. Hugo, where? 
mom mark match right under little bitty unimportant villain Briar, the editor, wanted to give the volcano story to Hotshot Trebleski. Hotshot Trebleski does all the biggest story, he said. This is an outrage, said Nelly. Little bitty and impotable is my beat. That means whatever happens, there is my story. I guess you are right, said Brian, the editor. Hotshot Trebleski cried like a baby. You better hun- hurry, said Brian the editor. I am hurrying, said Nelly. Remember, it's spelled Volca- B-O-L-C-A-N-O Volcano. Yep, said Nelly, carrying her typewriter out the door. And most importantly, said Brian the editor, be careful, sir said Nelly, as she waved down a taxi, remain a safe distance from the volcano at all times, called Brian the editor. But Nelly didn't hear him. She was in the taxi and speeding toward the smoky, rubbling, lava packed volcano. To be continued. Extra, extra. Nelly Nagraf is, of course, not a real person, but she's particularly inspired by one Nelly Bly, who was a courageous journalist in the late 10, 000, 10, 000, 10, 800 years, who traveled around the world as a reporter and set a speed recording record doing it. You can read more about her and on Epic. Nelly Bly, an investigative journalist for Kit, by Alan Mahoney. Nelly's last name, Nagraf, comes from a term that reporter used, a Nagraf, pronounced Nagraf. It's a paragraph, paragraph near the top of an article that explains what the important news is. Unfortunately, no. Every reporter used nut graphs, leaving reader as confused as a squirrel searching for a missing nut. What sort of mess does Nelly get into? Find out in a hot story, part two of three. Available now. The end.